so this is the 7493 um, counter. So previously we've been using JK flip-flops to do our counting, but now we're going to look at this integrated circuit that is a binary counter. It's an up counter and it is a mod 2 counter and a mod 8 up counter, both made from JK flip-flops, but we can combine those to make a mod 16 up counter. So this are the two counters that are actually built in internally. One mod 2 made from one JK flip-flop and one mod 8 made from three JK flip-flops. So remember that when you look at this the clock is the least significant bit and then the one furthest away would be the most significant bit. So from this one you could count from 0 to 7 and on this one you could count 0 and 1. So they're both built into this one integrated circuit. The trick is we can combine them to make a mod 16. So if we're feeding the clock into the mod 2 counter on our IC, okay, and then we were feeding another clock into CP1 of our mod 8, this one would count to 0 to 7, this one would count 0 to 1. To make it a mod 16, what we do is we don't make a clock connection at CP1 from the clock itself. Instead, we run a wire from Q0 to CP1. This is not the clock. The only place the clock enters now will be that pin CP0. And this is now our mod 16 counter. It will count from 0 to 15. The one the clock goes into here, this is our least significant bit. This is our most significant bit. So this is the ones place, the two place, the four place, the eight place. All right. So the other nice th feature of this is there's a NAND gate also built into the IC. And when we just tie it to ground, those two pins, they're called the master resets, then it counts from 0 to 15 if we've connected it like a mod 16. All right. Um, if we want to reset it, we have to pick the appropriate cues to do that. So this is how we do it. If we wanted to reset at 10, Okay, we want to count 0 to 9. So we look here at 10 in decimal. All right, that's going to be Q3 and Q1. All right, when we do that, that means we need to take these because we don't want to show 10. So the nanosecond, it's 10, we want to reset. So we feed this and this Q1 and Q3 into MR1 and MR2. Okay after we unplug and we also unplug them from ground that will make it count zero to nine and then reset to count to 11 for instance we would need to reset at 12. so here and here it's where we need to reset q3 and q2 so we would not have the master resets tied to ground and we would run wires from q3 and q2 to the master resets so this is the pinout diagram. So this is the clock for the 2-bit counter. This is the clock for the 8-bit. But we wouldn't run the clock if we were using the 16-bit. So if we wanted to make a 16-bit counter, we would do what? We'd take from Q0 here and run into CP1. MR1, MR2 are our resets. NC is no connection. This is power, ground, Q0, Q3, Q1, Q2. All right, and this is the logic diagram that's inside. You see there are actually four flip-flops in there. And these are our Q outputs, and the pin numbers are actually labeled here. And here, tied to the NAND gate, are those master resets.